discretion is advised. I don't claim him as my son now, and I do not claim Stoney as my daughter. I don't feel no remorse for the death of them demons. Well, he wasn't gonna tell because he was happy that I killed him. Everybody wanna know, yes, I did kill her! Michelle Blair admits to killing her 13-year-old daughter, Stoney Blair, because she believed the teen and her 9-year-old son, whom she's also accused of murdering, had been harming her youngest child. Michelle Angela Blair, called Angel by her friends, has confessed to killing her children and then placing them in her freezer. Michelle Angela Blair was born May 10, 1979. She grew up in a dysfunctional household. Her mother was a violent, abusive woman, both physically and mentally. When Michelle was a young girl, she was abused and sexually assaulted by one of her mother's female friends. When she finally had the courage to tell her mom, her mother looked at her and said, it's over and done with. What do you want me to do about it? Michelle went back to her room, sat on her bed and felt stupid and violated and in disbelief. After this, she was forced to see her abuser, her mother's best friend, day in and day out, and the abuse continued. This planted a seed of betrayal and rage inside of her that grew for the rest of her life. Abuse in a child can be very detrimental in the development of the brain. Research shows that child abuse is associated with structural abnormalities of the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is part of the brain that connects the two hemispheres so they can communicate with each other. Conduct disorder, also known as CD, is associated with abnormalities of the corpus callosum. Conduct disorder is characterized by aggressive, deceptive, and destructive behavior. Michelle Blair's sexual abuse continued into her teens, which also included a male. She told her mother once again, her mother did not a thing. At age 19, Michelle had her first baby with a man named Alexander Dorsey. They named her Gabrielle. A few years later in her 20s, her mother had a stroke. She asked her mother once again why she didn't do a thing. Her mother could barely speak, but gave her the same answer. By 2002, Alexander and Michelle are no longer together. She is now a 24-year-old single mother of two girls named Gabrielle and Stoney Dorsey. On September 18th of that year, CPS receives first allegations of abuse. Her two daughters, Gabrielle and Stoney, have burns on their hands. CPS investigates and confirms it. In 2003, she meets Stephen Barry Sr. and they have a son on June 20, 2004 and name him Stephen Barry Jr. On February 21, 2005, CPS receives a second allegation of abuse. Gabrielle and Stoney are at their father's when their aunt gives them a bath. She notices whip marks from extension cords on their backs, some fresh and some healed. CPS investigates and confirms the abuse. Michelle Blair is referred for services and has to take parenting classes and counseling. CPS gives no petition to the courts to remove the kids. A few months later, in April of 2006, Michelle hears rumors of the girl's grandfather, Dorsey Sr., sleeping in the same room on the floor as the girls and is molesting seven-year-old Stoney. Michelle stops the girls from visiting at their dad's house, but their father is welcome to visit any time. Michelle then sits down and tells her kids what happened to her as a child. She tells them everything and is very detailed about what happened to her what was done, and how it made her feel. Stephen and Michelle had an on-again, off-again relationship for three years, producing another son named Matthew. But the relationship finally came to an end, and once again, she's a single mother. In mid-August 2012, Gabriel tells Michelle that Matthew was making his wrestling dolls lay on top of each other, simulating sexual activity. Michelle asked, why are you doing that? Anyone ever do that to you? He said no, then said yes. Stephen does it. Michelle went upstairs to Stephen's room and said, Matthew says you was humping on him. Is this true? Stephen just stood up and stared at Michelle, speechless. Michelle took his silence as guilt. She asked again and he said yes, but that was all he did. She asked, did you hump on him with your underwear off? He said no, but Matthew said yes, he did. Michelle then went into the hallway and paced and paced, then began yelling at Stephen, you beeped your brother, you beeped your brother, and began to beat him. Matthew said, mom, he do this thing almost every night. Matthew said he couldn't breathe because Stephen would push his face into his plastic sheets and wrap things around his neck when he was humping on his butt like a basketball. Michelle grabbed a garbage bag and put it over Stephen's head and yelled at him. How do you like this? See how it feels not to breathe? Stephen tore through the bag so he could breathe. Michelle then used force flex bags. Stephen lost consciousness. Michelle slapped him awake and then put the bag over his head again. 
For the next two weeks, Michelle tortured Stephen as Matthew continued to tell her more and more. Michelle started using a belt and wrapping it around his neck until he passed out. Drop him on the floor, then do it again. Matthew said Stephen would piss on him on the bottom bunk in the middle of the night and in the morning all the time. Michelle had always thought he was a bedwetter and put plastic sheets on his bed. After hearing this, she put Stephen in a boiling hot tub of water until his feet blistered. She punched and kicked him while he stood in the bathtub and burned his body with the hot scalding water, especially pouring on his genitals until the skin peeled off. Matthew told his mom that Stephen would pee in his nose and ears, and one time his eyes were burning because Stephen peed gooey stuff in his eyes. Matthew said Stephen would bring him into the basement in the middle of the night and make him drink Windex. For years, Michelle thought Matthew had the stomach flu, which caused him to vomit and have diarrhea. So Michelle made Stephen drink Windex until he threw up, then beat Stephen so bad with the belt that it left burning scar marks on his stomach, back, and buttocks. She also began to pour scalding hot water on Stephen's anus, causing second and third degree burns. She starved him and burned him with cigarettes, and punched him in the face, splitting his lips. She also hit him in the face with a 2x4, breaking out and chipping his teeth. After punishing Stephen for two weeks, Michelle decided that he had had enough, and tried to give him soup. He didn't want it, so she force-fed him. He said he had to go to the bathroom, so Michelle took him. She noticed his breathing was all crazy, so she sat down with him and noticed he couldn't even hold himself up. So she put him to bed. On August 30, 2012, Stephen Barry Jr. was found dead in his bed, full of vomit. Michelle Blair knew she messed up. She told Matthew she was going to call the police and turn herself in. Matthew told her not to and not to leave her. Michelle thought about how much Matthew had been through, so she didn't call the cops. Instead, Michelle wrapped nine-year-old Stephen in his favorite blanket and put him in the freezer in the living room. Michelle Blair homeschools her kids and glues their assignments and achievements on the wall above the freezer that Stephen is in. In May of 2013, nine months after killing Stephen, Matthew tells Michelle that Stoney had been raping Stephen and him all along and that Stoney is still doing it. When Michelle asks Stoney and she denies it, Michelle grabs Stoney and throws her into the room and glares at her and says, tell me the truth. Stoney began screaming at Michelle saying she hated Matthew because everybody thinks he is so cute and she hated her dead brother Stephen and everybody. Michelle beats Stoney and throws her all over her bedroom. Stoney gets back up because Michelle always told her kids to get back up after she hit them. She then puts a plastic bag over her head until she loses consciousness, waits for her to recover, and does it again. Matthew was standing in the doorway watching him again yelling at his mom, telling her that Stoney takes her freshly used tampon and squeezes the blood from it into his mouth. Michelle grabbed a stick and began beating Stoney in the head. Michelle asked Stoney if it was true, and Stoney said, yes, so? So Blair repeated the torture routine. She reached inside her panties, grabbed her tampon, and squeezed the blood from it into Stoney's mouth. Matthew says that Stoney and Stephen forced him to watch them do the nasty, then they would do it to him. Michelle put Stoney naked in the bathtub and poured scalding hot water on her until her skin started to fall off. Matthew said Stoney would sit on his face and said, Mom, it stinks real bad. Michelle then grabbed the 2x4 and hit Stoney over and over on her back, trying to crush her tailbone. For the next two weeks, Stoney was tortured. Michelle burned Stoney with a clothing iron, causing burns and open wounds on her neck and back then poured rubbing alcohol into her burns to cause her more pain and to keep the wounds open. She starved Stoney and gave her oatmeal once a day, burnt her with the cigarettes, punched her in the face and split her lips. Michelle even chewed off pieces of Stoney's ears off a little bit at a time. On May 25, 2013, Michelle put a plastic bag over Stoney's face, scarf around her neck and beat her in the head with a stick until she was dead. Michelle told her oldest daughter Gabrielle to help her put Stoney's body into the freezer. Stoney was naked, except for the scarf around her neck. They wrapped her in plastic and put her on top of her brother Stephen. After this, life went on as usual for almost two years in the Blair household. They were still living in apartment 804, the low rent townhouse in the Martin Luther King apartment complex on the city's near east side. I have a dream. When people had noticed that two of her children were missing, she told them they were at a Nan's house, or she'd tell people they stayed inside because they didn't like to be around people. She continued receiving $771 per month in food assistance, and received Medicaid and welfare benefits for all four children, and received rare child support payments from Alexander Dorsey and Stephen Barry. In reality, Alexander Duke Dorsey owed $39,000 in back child support. Stephen Barry Sr. owed more than $11,000 in back child support. 
But the money wouldn't have done Michelle any good. She was bad with money. She had gotten behind in her rent. She owed $2,206 to the complex. I don't want my money. She was given an eviction notice but wouldn't leave. On March 24, 2015, she was served an eviction notice by a Waynes County Sheriff's Department bailiff to enforce a court-ordered eviction at 11 a.m., but she wasn't there. Michelle had gone to her best friend, Tori Childs, early that morning. Michelle knew that she was going to be found out because of the eviction. She told her the truth about her missing kids. She told her what she did and why. Tori Childs was in shock. Like, Angel, why wouldn't you just give the kids to me? She like, um... Tori, I'm like, why you just didn't give them to me? We could have figured out something. She like, um, what they was raping my son. They was raping my son. Michelle then said bye and left to go babysit to the neighbors. Meanwhile, the eviction crew went inside and began removing furniture from the home. One of the first things they grabbed was the freezer. When they opened it, they seen the frozen and lifeless body of Stoney wrapped in a plastic bag. They immediately called the police. When police arrived, they made another discovery the body of Steven right underneath her. Neighbors didn't waste any time disclosing Michelle Blair's whereabouts. Neighbors flocked to the scene and could see two bodies on the floor through the open door. Steven had died with his eyes open and was wrapped in his blanket. Stoney's body had been covered with a pink jacket. Police found Michelle at a neighbor's house babysitting. Michelle Blair was taken into custody. When police took her away, they said she proclaimed, I'm sorry. On March 26, 2015, Michelle Blair was charged with four counts of first-degree child abuse and a charge of committing first-degree child abuse in the presence of another child, each crime carrying a punishment of up to life in prison. Blair's bond amount was set at one million cash or surety. At her video arraignment, when Michelle was told she was not allowed to see her surviving children anymore, she walked off camera. On the day the bodies were discovered, the surviving children received medical examinations and they disclosed being abused throughout their childhood by their mother. Medical professionals identified 25 scars and injuries, both old and new, on eight-year-old Matthew's back, as well as loop-shaped scars and injuries on both his back and buttocks that are consistent with being whipped with an extension cord. When asked about the visible cut above her left eye, the 17-year-old Gabrielle told the interviewer, Blair struck her in the head with a two-by-four. The broken front tooth was from the time the teen's mother hit her with a curling iron. Both kids were severely malnourished. It took two days for the bodies of Stoney and Stephen to thaw before autopsies could be performed. Both were ruled homicides, Stoney dying of multiple blunt force trauma injuries, Stephen dying of multiple blunt force trauma and thermal injuries. It was also discovered that Stoney's arm had fractured at some point in her life and was never treated. She also only had 5 millimeters of body fat on her. The medical examiner listed March 24, 2015 at 12.49pm the date and time the bodies were received by the coroner as the official times of death. The Wayne County Prosecutor's Office amended charges against Michelle Blair to include two counts of felony murder, two counts of premeditated murder, and one count of torture in the deaths of her children, 13-year-old Stoney Ann Blair and 9-year-old Stephen Gage Barry. In court, Michelle admitted to killing Stephen and Stoney, calling them demons. Blair said that she meant to cause Stephen severe physical harm. She did not intend on killing him, but she did openly admit to intentionally having murdered her daughter, Stoney. Blair told the judge she did not feel any remorse over her actions. They had no remorse for what they did to my son. There was no other option. There's no excuse for rape. I would kill them again. Michelle Blair then asked for the death penalty, but Michigan doesn't have it. Michelle Blair pleaded guilty in June 2015 to two counts of first-degree premeditated murder and is now serving a life sentence at the Huron Valley Correctional Facility without the possibility of parole. She has also lost custody of her surviving children. Since being incarcerated, Michelle Blair has had 49 incidents in prison. She only spent one full day in general population. On her second day in prison, she beat up another inmate. She has added 38 months to five years to her sentence for assaulting prison guards and for flinging a Pringles can full of her own feces and urine at prison guards. Michelle is so violent she has to wear a mask when taken out of her cell. So what do you think? Was Matthew telling the truth? Did the older children abuse him? And if they did, where did they learn that behavior from? Maybe there was some truth to Stoney's alleged sexual abuse by her grandfather. But why did Michelle freak out on her grandfather like she did on Stephen and Stoney for the alleged abuse of Matthew? Instead, she did the exact same thing her mother did to her abusers. Nothing.
Michelle Angel Blair presented herself as a loving mother of four to the outside world. This is her Facebook. This is a post on her wall. Look at the smile on her face. At the time she took this picture, two of her kids were 10 feet away from her, frozen solid in the living room freezer for almost two years. Did you ever actually see anything? of any sexual abuse of any kind between either Steven and Stoney and Because so far all you've told me was that you just heard it. Welcome to my channel. This is Mr. Scary. Hope you enjoy the show.